When we talk about um, an analyzing reading fluency in context, or reading fluency in context, that's like when a student reads a text like this one here. And I'm just going to read this one sentence. And there's, there's three things I'm always going to ask you to do whenever you're evaluating a student and they're reading a text, in uh, reading how a student does, and, and reading um, and, and looking at their oral fluency and looking at how they read, you know, in context. Okay. So uh, we always do a couple of things whenever you have something that looks like this. Okay. Where there's a text and then there's this, the teacher's notes on the top of how the student reads. I always will ask you to do one, two, and three. First thing I'll ask you to do is just read the text without any miscues. So you just read it. Uh, my dog champ is a good dog. He can sit, stay, and roll over. He barks if he hears a something, right? We just read it once with no miscues. Can you remember that? And then you go back and you, you read it again, and this time, the second time, so this is step two, we identify mistakes. So I'm going to circle all the words. There's only three words here that the student got wrong. And we're going to look to see uh, what were the mistakes, try and identify the errors. So this is step two. So I'll put down a frowny town here. And it looks like they said camp for champ. And uh, this word has a constant diagraph. Is that right? Constant diagraph. And uh, and then good, and they said goad, and they fixed it, but they said good they said goad originally, right? That has a vowel diagraph. That's a vowel diagraph. Do you agree? Same thing with hears. They say hers, it's hears. This has a vowel diagraph. A vowel diagraph is two vowels that make one sound. Is that right? Vowel diagraph, two vowels that make one sound is a vowel diagraph. So so step one, we read it to ourselves. No mistakes. Step two, we go back and we look at the mistakes, see if we can spot things. Like in this first sentence, I'm seeing the student is having difficulty with constant diagraphs and vowel diagraphs, right? Thumbs up. And then step three. Step three is we identify what they do to fix mistakes or what are they doing correctly. So let's start with what they're doing to fix a mistake. How do they, this word, whenever we see this little symbol here, it means self-correcting. Let me see if I can, uh, I want to erase some of this stuff. This is really important. I'm so, I'm so thankful that, that we get to do this together because no one ever did this with me. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, I, I went to graduate school. I mean, maybe they did, but but I just, it just went right over my head. I did not pick it up. It, you had alertness as you went. And even then, you know, there were a lot of holes because you were doing it, you were learning it as you go. But, but nowadays, you know, you, teachers nowadays get a lot more exposure to this, I hope. Uh, but anyways, here we are. You see that C, that means self-correcting. Okay, so this is that, that's indicating that there's some type of self-correcting. Whenever you see self-correcting, usually it means that the student said um, did a miscue, and they realized it was wrong. Now, now let's do let's read this out. It said here, my dog camp. Um, oh, sorry, they say they say camp, not champ. They get that wrong, but they say my dog camp. Dog could be named camp. Um, is a go is a go dog. Now, camp is a miscue, but it kind of makes sense. My dog. It should be champ, but it, it could could be camp. So so the miscue makes sense. My dog camp is a go dog. Now go dog does not make sense. Do you agree? When the miscue doesn't make sense, go dog. What? You're like question mark. Does it, I don't doesn't make sense. When it doesn't make sense, but the student self corrects, what it means is that they went back and they looked for surrounding words that might help them identify the miscue, make sense of the miscue. So here, go dog doesn't make sense, sense but maybe uh, good dog. Oh, dog, dog. Uh, good dog does make sense. So they look for a, a context clue, a surrounding word, um, that helps us make sense of an unknown word. Now, when it helps you make sense, we call it a semantic context clue. 
So dog is a semantic context clue. It's the surrounding word that helps us make sense and fix a miscue that doesn't make any sense. So when I say uh, semantic context clue, uh, it, is a, it is a type of context clue that helps the student make sense of a miscue, okay? The key word is make sense. All right, they're doing that correct. Now look team, in one sentence, one line, we were able to identify two mistakes, gaps in, constant di in a constant diagraph and vowel diagraphs, and we were able to spot right away, like in the first sentence, in the first one, two, three, three, four, five, six, six or seven words, right? I think it's seven words. Seven words, we were able to spot um, a strength. This is enough to write a great essay on. If we wanted to even go even further, we could spot like, we could also point out their, their high uh, frequency sight word vocabulary. They've got a lot of high frequency words here. Let me circle some of them that maybe you've glossed over. Look at all these high frequency words. Uh, let me do a different color here. My is a, uh, he, uh, even these decodable words, can, sit, and, Roll all this uh, if this is all wonderful high frequency vocabulary, right? So we could also point out if we're trying to look for multiple strengths, we could point out their use of semantic context clues to fix things. And we could uh, point out their high frequency sight word vocabulary in just one sentence. So I got two, two areas of need and two strengths in one sentence. This is looking at a student's oral reading fluency in context okay okay and now after you watch this and you're thinking about oral reading fluency in context you're going to go and you're going to watch this video here let me find it <laughs> you're going to watch this section where it goes into uh well let me get it goes into uh, uh so uh it's uh this one right here watch this video after you listen to this section okay and then the second piece is reading words in isolation. And reading words in isolation, let me clear this off now. Uh, so, so words in isolation, we're going to just do, um, we're just going to have a list of words and the student reads, they're, they're printed and the student reads it out loud. And what we do is we do two things. We look to see at what they're getting right and what they're getting wrong. And it doesn't matter the order in which you do this, okay? Um, you're trying to spot where they go right and where they go wrong, okay? Now, I've just selected a small portion of words. You can go to the extended video. The extended video is the one that's labeled uh, reading words in isolation. But um, just at just at looking at this right here, can you spot where they went wrong? They're supposed to say the word right, and they it looks like they said uh, rigged or bright, and they said uh, this should be. I'm going to just call that a short vowel. Let's call that a short vowel. Short i. So what's going on here? It looks like they're having difficulty with the i g h. Is that right? And IGH is an example where we have three things that make one sound. That's a type of, uh, it's called actually a trigraph. A trigraph is when we have three letters that make one sound. And, it, and, and it's a long, and in this case right here, it's a, the trigraph IGH is three letters that make one sound, a long, long I. Now team, it's happening here, here, and here, right? So clearly, this is something, this type of um, uh, a mistake is something that needs to be fixed, right? It's a cluster that needs to be fixed. It's a specific type of cluster. It's not like this cluster here. It's not like, a, it's not like street. That's a cluster where it's three things, but that's three things, three sounds. This is a cluster where we have three things, one sound, and that's known as a trigraph. So we could point out that they're having difficulty with constant clusters involving trigraphs, right? And there's also this one right here. Now, now this is, uh, it looks like it's a vowel constant E, a silent E word, right? And 
And that would be true if it was a word like cake, right? Or hike or something like that. But this is actually a, a different type of word. This is a, a VCE word. That's true. But it's also irregular. Can you see that? Um, so I probably should have put a, I'll put a dash there. So, so it is um, mo, move. We do not use the long O. We don't use that silent E. Do you know what I mean? So in this case right here, uh, the student got this wrong and it looks like, I, I'm sorry, I didn't put that dash there. There should be a long O there. They're applying this rule, vowel constant, silent E to it. When in fact, move does not use that pattern. It's irregular, meaning it, it doesn't follow that phonics pattern. It's like, a, it's like when I say a regular word, it's like the word one. There's no phonics element there. You, there's no W or what U sound in it or the word what. The ah sound is neither long nor short. It's something else. It's irregular, right? All right. All right. So team, uh, you're going to now watch the videos involving reading fluency in context and reading fluency in isolation, okay? Try those videos now and uh, see if that helps you with thinking about um, analyzing a student's or reading fluency and with these assessments, okay? It will help you with the first essay that we do, okay? All right, let's keep...